All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. So as promised in the last video, today I'm going to catch you up on what's been going on with this 855 block out of the Steiger tractor that's behind you over there that has been sitting in my shop for months and months and months, way too long. All right, so just a quick recap. The engine came here because number two cylinder was leaking coolant out of the head gasket. So when I tore the heads off, I found exactly what I thought I was gonna find. Number two, and I think it was number three was the other one, counter bores were sunk into the block. The liners were sunk. So either you're gonna disassemble the engine and get the counter bores cut, shim the liners up and then put it back together, or you're going to disassemble the engine and send the block in for machining, and get it done properly, and then reassemble the engine. So it doesn't matter. Either way, the engine has to come out. We gotta strip it down. We have to fix this properly, whichever way we wind up doing it. So I talked to the customer, the decision is made, we're gonna send it to the engine machine shop. They're gonna machine this all and fix it for us. So we did that, I pulled the motor, stripped it down, sent it in. I spent thousands of dollars on machining on this block to make everything perfect. So you just expect that when you come get it back, it's just all gonna to go together the way it should, right? All right, so I get it back. I've got new PAI liners for this engine. Uh, great company, really good liners. I love the rebuild kits. They make very good stuff. So I have that stuff here. I drop all the liners in and I check my protrusion and I've got number five. Doesn't matter what I do in the number five hole, I've got below spec protrusion. Minimum three thousandths and I can't quite get three thousandths out of it. Some liners are higher, some are lower. So I start swapping liners around, trying to see if I can get you know the highest ones to fit in there. Doesn't matter what I do, it's always too low. Uh, so I'm blaming the machining. There's something wrong with these counter bores because these are brand new liners. So I get my measuring tools out and I measure the counter bores and ah, I just can't find anything wrong with them. They, they measure perfect. They're, they're within a half a thousandth of an inch of, of perfection of the high end of the spec, which means the liners should be to the high end of their protrusion and they're not, they're all low, but that number five is below the spec. I, I can't put it together like that. If I do, it's just gonna blow a head gasket right away again. So I pull the liners all out and I measure them as good as I can and, and I'll explain some of that in, in a bit here. And I mean, they all measure perfect. So I wound up taking one of the old liners and putting it in here and magically the protrusion is fine. With an old worn out liner, now my protrusion is good. I just don't understand. I don't know, something's weird going on here. So I called my engine supplier. They're like, yeah, no problem. We'll send you another liner. They sent me another liner. I put it in there. And what do you think changed? Right, absolutely nothing. It doesn't change a thing. It's, I'm still low on number five. Well, how can I have seven bad liners now? Doesn't make sense. And so I did some more swapping around and double checking and triple checking because obviously I'm doing something wrong here. Anyway, uh, I could not figure out a problem with anything. So I wound up pulling all the liners. I took the block, I took the liners, I took them all back to the machine shop. We remeasured everything. This is a different machine shop. This is one of our local machine shops because this was shipped off somewhere else to get done. Anyway, go through this all and yeah, everything's perfectly fine. We don't, there's no problems with any of it. It measures all exactly the way it should be. And yet magically when you put it together, it doesn't work out that way. So we measured the new liners against the old liner and it all measures exactly the same. Like there's just, I mean, it just doesn't make sense. So I start phoning up all the different machine shops and mechanics I know and everything else. And, and I mean, guys are picking on the stupidest things. I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to throw shade on anybody. It's just, they didn't have answers either. When everything measures perfectly fine, like then what do you do when you put it together and magically doesn't work? So I talked to one of my mechanic friends and he said, well, are you using the proper hold down tool to hold the liner in place while you're doing your measuring? And I'm like, I'm just using my, my bolts with washers like I always do. Oh no, you can't do that. And I'm like, why not? And he says, because when you torque them up, the block twists and all kinds of weird and wonderful things happen. And I'm going, you torque those bolts to 50 foot pounds to hold the liner down when you're doing liner protrusion. 50 foot pounds on, if you're gonna twist this block on, whatever, it's not like I have any better idea. So here's a picture of the actual Cummins tool that they want you to use when you're holding these liners down. There's a couple different ways. They have one that shows just the clamps. They have one that shows the bar that goes across. And so what I did was I already had the machine shop build me 
one of these stepped plates for a liner puller for pulling these liners out. So that works great to set down on top of there. And then I had them build me a big old H bar that fit the size of these bolts. And I made, well, I used the, the original head bolts along with uh, some spacers on there. And I torqued the liners down with that bar holding it in place, just like the book says. And guess what changed? Yeah, absolutely nothing. But I mean, I, I had to do it. I had to do all this because I didn't have any other ideas. Like there, there is, like what else? It all measures perfectly. Like what else? Maybe I'm, maybe that is it. Well, of course it's not. It didn't change anything. So that didn't help. And then I was talking to another guy and he's like, well, what are you using for a liner protrusion test uh, measuring tool? And of course, I've got my deck bridge that I use for doing this. Oh, no, you can't use that. That's a poor excuse for liner protrusion. I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh yeah, that's not the right tool. This isn't magic, it's not rocket science. Well, once again, like, it's not like I have any better answers at this point. So, I went and got myself the actual central tools block with the dial indicator hole and everything. I'm using a snap-on gauge because I really like these gauges, but it, it did come with a gauge too. And I checked all my liners with the actual proper block and guess what changed? Yes, absolutely nothing, because it makes no difference. I'm not frustrated at all. I paid dearly for this tool because I wanted to get it quickly. And that didn't change anything. So anyway, the list goes on. There's, there's more stuff like that that guys are nitpicking and whatever. And I just, I, I don't know. I, I tried everything. So finally, I called the machine shop that did the machining on it. And I said, listen. What I want you guys to do, I'm going to send this block back. What I want you to do is cut a couple thousandths off the deck, a couple more thousandths off the deck. And I know that's going to give me issues with setting up the injectors and stuff, but I want you to do that. That'll get my liner protrusion still not right, but it'll at least be in spec. And I'm just going to put it together because there are no answers to this. There is no answer. It's, it's just a, a complete anomaly. And, and I've talked to just so many people and nobody can explain this. And that machine shop said, well, why don't you just get the counterbores cut and shim the liners, the one that's low? And I'm like, ah, yes, yes, I could do that. But the problem is I spent thousands of dollars getting this machining perfect. And the machining is perfect. It measures perfect. Cutting your counterbores and shimming your liners is an option. It's not the right way to do it in my mind. It's, it's a patch job. Okay, I don't like that. When you spend all that money getting everything perfect back to OEM, you shouldn't have to be cutting counterbores to shim your liners. But finally, they convinced me to do it. So we have a guy out here, uh, his name is Big Al Ventures, and he's like a mobile machinist. He will come right to your shop, he'll cut the counterbores right in your engine, does a fantastic job. Uh, he probably does most of the engines in southern Manitoba. And uh, so I phoned him up. I, I hadn't talked to him yet. I explained everything what I was doing. I said, I need you to come out and, and uh, cut this counterbore so I can shim it. And he says, whoa, back up, back up, back up, back up. He says, uh, he corrected me on something that I had wrong that I, that I had told him, so that was good. Uh, I'm human too, I make mistakes. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm making a mistake here. Like, I just don't know what it is, but anyway. So he says, Ray, I've been running into this a lot lately. And my eyes, I'm talking to him on the phone, but my eyes are like, really? Like somebody else in the world knows about this. And uh, <laughs> I have a lot of really great contacts for engine stuff, guys. I don't know everybody, obviously, but I really felt like I scoured the earth for this. Anyway, he says, yeah. He said, uh, here's the problem. I hope this is going to work the way I want it to. But you can see right here, we got a little ridge. And that ridge is the compression ring that actually seals the head gasket. So when you measure liner protrusion, that's your needle. Your needle has to go in between here and that ridge because that's the only place it fits. Now, the problem is when you take the liner out of the engine and you measure the thickness of it, you have to use a caliper. And the problem with using a caliper is if you just measure over top of the flange, you're getting that compression lip in there as well. And so you don't get an accurate reading. So what you're doing is that little tiny area on the edge just before the compression lip, that's where you're measuring with your caliper. Because you don't, I, I don't have anything that, that has like pinchers like that that can go over top and, and accurately measure this way. 
So you can probably figure out already that where you're measuring with the needle versus whether where you're measuring with the caliper is not the same. So when we, when we pulled these liners out and we're measuring here, they measure that they're the same, but there's actually something more to this. So what Big Al was telling me is he said, if you go back to the shop, drop your liners and your motor, and instead of measuring your protrusion in here like we've always done, measure it just on that outside piece. And he said, in order to do that, like you're gonna have to you're gonna have to shave down the tip on your dial indicator to make it super, super, super tiny so that you can actually contact that because otherwise the radius edge of that tip hits that compression lip and it'll mess up your reading. So I did it. And that is where buying the central tool block came in super handy because it comes with a super, super fine pointed tip on there. It has a few different tips and that one was in there. That is perfect for doing this job. I have a bunch of dial indicators, a bunch of different brands, and I do not have any that have such a fine tip on there. So that made measuring this work really well. So let's have a look at what this winds up being. I don't know if this camera can focus in good enough to see how tiny that tip is, but it is like crazy tiny. Okay, so we're gonna zero the dial indicator, and I'm gonna measure that lip, and I'm sorry you got a little bit of a bad angle here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to get a clean reading on that, but. Anyways, I have to kind of help it along because that little tip is so fine it gets stuck in the crack in between there. So I have to kind of lift it over and then onto that ring. Okay, so there's my compression lip right there. So right there is our reading and look at that. We are sitting at almost exactly six thousandths of an inch and that's the low hole. Now if I bump this over the lip and go measure on the other side like we've always done, suddenly we're at two and a half thousandths of an inch. Can you believe that? If I get back over here, whoop, dropped it off right there. It's like just over, just a hair over six thousandths depending on where you, how you hold your tongue. And this side, not even quite three thousandths of an inch. So right now we're below spec. And now we're like right at the high end of spec. So what Big Al has told me was at somewhere along the way, there's been a running change in how they manufacture these liners. And they're making that inside piece thinner than what they ever used to, which is why when you put an old OEM liner back in, it measures differently than all the new ones. I had a new OEM liner that measured exactly that same way. Hallelujah, there's a solution to this and a proper solution. So the moral of the story is I spent about $1,000 in extra measuring tooling and hold down liner clamps and all this junk that I didn't need to solve a problem that never existed. If I had just slapped this motor together like so many other people do and not bothered checking this because it came back from the machine shop, it'll be fine, right? Yeah, this time it would have been fine. And uh, I would have saved myself months of messing around. But I mean, I don't get paid for any of this. This, I can't charge my customer for all this trying to figure this out. Like, I can charge some time, but I can't, I, I mean, you would not believe me if I told you how many hours I spent messing around with swapping liners and trying different liners and searching down parts and checking the internet and phoning shops and phoning machine shops and going to places to talk to people. I mean, I, I've just spent an enormous amount of shop time trying to figure this out, and I wasn't smart enough to figure it out. It took Big Al Ventures to lead me down the right path. But out of the dozens and dozens of people I talked to, he's the only guy that knew. But this is all he does is this kind of stuff. So, I mean, to his credit, uh, man, awesome. Highly recommend the guy. Very, very knowledgeable individual. So now that I finally have this figured out, I can actually start reassembling this motor and get this guy his tractor back. Oh, it's been a mess. We already missed spring planting. This tractor should have been gone so long ago. I just feel sick about it. 